The determination of the war cabinet in Israel to attack Rafa is proving to be a crisis point in a war which has now entered its fifth month. Opposition leader Benny Gantz gave Hamas until the start of Ramadan to surrender its remaining hostages. America has just tabled a draft motion at the Security Council calling for a temporary ceasefire in Gaza and opposing a ground offensive in Rafa, although temporary is still US policy and the motion itself has only been tabled to head off an Algerian one calling for an immediate ceasefire. It's not clear to me whether the war cabinet are simply engaging in a war of words with Hamas or whether it means what it says. Because if it does, it will have problems on three fronts. Its own army don't have the numbers for a ground attack without calling up more reservists, which would be unpopular. Military intelligence thinks Hamas would survive such an attack, undermining Benjamin Netanyahu's narrative that all Israel has to do is finish off four battalions. The war cabinet itself is split, with one prominent member, Gabi Eisenkot, rebuking Netanyahu for talking about absolute victory. He believes Israel will not be able to fulfill its war aim to dismantle Hamas. A second can of worms is the effect a ground attack on Rafa would have on relations with Egypt, which has played ball with Israel. It's allowed Israel to dictate the flow of aid into Gaza and is preparing for an influx of refugees. Sinai Foundation for Human Rights said Egyptian authorities are preparing a 10-kilometer buffer zone to receive displaced Palestinians. But the reoccupation of the Philadelphia Corridor a 14-kilometre buffer zone along the border is a clear breach of the treaty Egypt signed with Israel in 1979. And military intelligence is rightly concerned about the infiltration of Palestinian militants into Sinai, which already has insurgency firmly embedded. Thirdly, there is a clearly stated objection of its closest ally, Washington, not to launch this operation without having cleared the south of its 1.4 million refugees. The Israeli military requires continuous resupply of munitions from the US, and there's no sign Joe Biden has restricted that flow. Israel knows Washington will never call its bluff and plays on it. Put all that to one side. Let's assume that Israel will control the whole of the territory of the Strip. What will it have achieved? Israel has declared victory a number of times in this 75-year conflict. It did so in 1948 by expelling 700,000 Palestinians from their towns and villages. It thought it had defeated three Arab armies in 1967. Arul Sharon declared victory when he forced Yasser Arafat and the PLO out of Beirut in 1982. And yet five years after that, the first intifada started. When peace negotiations collapsed, the second intifada broke out. Israel again thought it could crush the Palestinian national cause by surrounding Yasser Arafat in his headquarters in Ramallah and poisoning him. It has assassinated a long list of Palestinian resistance leaders, from Arafat himself to Ahmed Yassin, Hamas's spiritual leader, Abdelaziz al-Rantisi, Faiti Shakaki, founder of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and so on. What have these killings achieved except to usher in another generation of fighters hardened by history at the hands of their occupiers? History is fueled by collective memory. The memory of the massacres of the War of 1948, like Tantura or Sabran Shatila in 1982, were passed on by word of mouth. Words were powerful enough to inspire future generations to resist. There was no internet then. Israel has made much use of a video compilation of the killings carried out by Hamas and other militants from Gaza on the kibbutzniks of southern Israel on October the 7th. If that video rightly horrifies its viewers, just imagine what effect four months of social media posts of the horrors committed by Israeli soldiers will have on future generations of Palestinians. The Nakba, or catastrophe, that Israel has conducted in Gaza in the last four months is much better documented than the Nakba of 1948. And these images will stay forever. Why should Israel think that this Nakba will evaporate in popular consciousness when the fighting is over. There are three times as many Palestinians in Jordan as there are in Gaza. They feel anger, deep humiliation about what has happened to their families in Gaza, and a massive desire for revenge. Now who in their right minds would want to pacify a southern border 60 kilometers long in exchange for a border with Jordan 482 kilometers long? But Israel can only see its own victimhood. It's incapable of seeing what it's doing to the Palestinians. Like a gambler rolling the dice, Netanyahu's army has gone from one hospital in Gaza to another, failing to find the headquarters of Hamas they insist is there. Even if they go into Rafah, Israel will never finish the job. It's only two alternatives, to follow the nationalist religious right 
who will turn a war over land into a war over religion, or to sit down with the leadership Palestinians are allowed to choose freely and negotiate with them about sharing the land. I know which choice I would make.